Hello, First Lutheran Church. This is Pastor Edward, and I'm here with my home chat coming to you from my little office here in Newcastle, Colorado. And it's Wednesday. And on Wednesday, we uh, use for our message of the week a little discussion and reading of our gospel message for su this coming Sunday. The gospel this week is in the book of John, starting with uh, chapter 11, verses 1 through 45. Now, it's a very long reading, so I'm going to just read the last third of it and make some comments after that. But again, it's John 11, 1 through 45, if you'd like to go and read it on your own. To set this up, you got to remember that Jesus is out there going to village to village, talking to people, doing his thing, and word comes to him that Lazarus, the brother of Martha and Mary, has died. So he returns to Bethany, where Martha and Mary and Lazarus live, uh, and we'll pick up the story from that point where he comes to Mary. This is starting in verse 32. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who have opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and there was a stone across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he's been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus look up, looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him, and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. I think there's a really good message in here for those of us who are struggling with another kind of disease, the coronavirus. The message is, I believe that Jesus is going to get us through this. Yes, there's much turmoil, there's much weeping, there's much struggling, there's much fear. We're all afraid. We're afraid of what could happen to us physically. We're afraid of what could happen to us financially. We're afraid for our families, our loved ones, our friends, our friends in the church. But I do believe that the theme of this story is that Christ will overcome. I, I can't paint rosy pictures that everything will be just wonderful and happy. I do have this feeling that there is another side. I say this a lot to people who are struggling. There comes a moment, sometime in the struggle, where there's a turning point. And often we don't notice when the turning point happens. And in this coronavirus thing, there is going to be a turning point for our country and our world, and especially here in Colorado. And we're going to not see it. It will pass us by. And then way down the line, we're going to say, look, it's getting better. We passed the turning point. So I'm going to urge all of us, first of all, pray. Put him first. And I know as I am, the anxieties and the troubles just nag at us, pull at us. Try to put those aside. Try to fight back and say that there is a God in control. 
that we don't have the answer, and I don't. But that means I have to have more reliance on the one who does have the answer. Hang in there. I'm hanging in there with you, too. My wife Caroline and I, we're getting a little cabin feverish, but we're going to get through it, too. Uh, you know, I'm over 60, so I'm concerned about health impacts. I'm worried about economics, too. But I'm there with you. We're going to get through it. Just hold on to each other right now. Write or call me if there's some worries or concerns. Just to hear each other's voice might help. Well, tomorrow I'm going to be doing coping skills. How can we get through this time of quarantine, this difficult time? Until then, I hope you have a good night, Wednesday night, and I'll be back tomorrow with another one of these home chats. Until then, may God bless you. I know he loves you. Amen.